This is really a test because I want to see if I can get away with lower resolution on YouTube videos because I was ending up with the highest resolution this little camera does and way to the files are just enormous. Um, but as I'm carving a scroll at the moment, I thought I'd just like say a word or two about how I go about carving things. Um, so, gouges, the key tool. Um, these Henry Taylor Sheffield made, gentleman size, uh, number five, which is re refers to the curvature. Five is quite a gentle curve. I generally uh, bevel both the back and the front because I, I tend to use hardwood. Uh, this piece, what I'm making this out of is a piece of um, chestnut, castania, which out of the window, um, I'm in the middle of a chestnut forest. Um, and there's next door's kids. Um, so, carving gouges, one of the few tools where it's better to have as many as possible. You reckon Gr Grim Grimling Gibbons, uh, a 17th or 18th century English woodcarver, probably the best, most famous woodcarver, um, was reckoned to have about three or four hundred gouges. And there's a very good reason for that, because you... I mean, here, there's two or three that I use all the time, like that one is a useful shape, that one's a useful shape. Um, the odd V tool, things like that. The odd curly one to get into fr funny spaces. But then, like, occasionally you need something a bit weirder, like... Oh, I don't know. Something like that. And when you need it, you need it. If you've got to go inside something, it's really handy. Um, I don't carve very much. I strongly recommend it as, as a hobby because it takes your mind off everything. Uh, I have the Radio 4, BBC Radio 4 playing. Sit here, carving away, and don't have a care in the world. I, just nothing else matters. Just really get into it. Um, Okay, little guide, guided tour of my workshop. What happened was that uh, when we bought this house, um, it needed a lot of work doing on it, and had the choice between, well, I decided that instead of paying people to make things, like the staircase or whatever, um, I'd buy the tools and have a go myself. And most, I mean, I made fairly bodge jobs of things, but good enough and in the process managed to buy myself some tools. That's in the distance, I don't know if you can see it, is the um, Apennines down the spine of Italy and Achilles back. Um, so this is in the workshop, um, shelf, shelf. Believe it or not, this is usually the tidiest room in the house. Uh, tools, 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 everything in its place and a place for everything. Tools, 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 tools. Very key part of the carving mark is the sharpening. Um, if I spend 50% of the time sharpening, it won't be wasted because that is, that is absolutely the key to being able to carve. That and patience. Two things. Patience, just like taking it slowly and getting on with it and having the patience to keep going and having the tools as sharp as you possibly bloody well can. Um, Various stones, that's relatively cool. Well, there's, there's a grinding wheel. Um, I've actually got that flipped back to front. So even that, if I get a nick in a gouge, I can take the nick out. And I mean, I use it for other things as well. And a, a buffing wheel on there. Um, various grades of stones, fairly coarse, fairly fine, very fine. And uh, bits of leather around that are strops with this stuff that I forget the name for it. I keep confusing it with locust powder. It isn't crocus powder, locust powder, something like that. Uh, just a very fine abrasive. Um, tools, 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 tools. Got a nice drill and a chop saw. Bizarrely, this, this room is disconnected from the rest of the house. God knows what it was meant. It might have been a cantina or something originally. Dates from 17-something, 1770, something like that. 
Uh, I've got a lathe, but one thing um, you don't realise when you're buying things like this, and you think, oh well, rather than pay people to do stuff, that you've got to bloody well maintain them. The drive belt in that's gone really slack, so it's stuck at that speed until I get around to getting a replacement. Similar with the bandsaw, which I love. I'm a bit scared of circular saw, so I got myself a bandsaw instead. Um, that bit there, the guide thing, uh, is really crappy um, cast, die cast thing, and that snapped, so it's held together with epoxy now, but it means that I can't get a very accurate cut on things. So that's annoying. Um, bench, of course. This, I'm very pleased with. It's basically just uh, trestles, a pair of trestles. Got a board across the bottom, on which I put the hand tools, hand power tools. Um, two metres by one metre top, which is some soft wood boards. The big gap there, so it's opened up since I put it together. And there, my God. And uh, a plywood top, uh, very simply put together. Not sure where I got the vise from. It's, it'll undo like that, which is nice to have. Uh, a Dremel, which is a wonderful tool to have. One bit of brilliance about this, though, is the hand power tools. Uh, I've got a power strip on either end for the power tool, so I can just leave them underneath if I need one, plug it in either end, pop it up on top. Um, laptop, chatting to Australia and listening to Ra BBC Radio 4. Uh, some dud musical instruments in need of repair. <laughs> no comment, found that down by the bins. Uh, and gouges, here are some of them. Um, I mean, a lot of these are picked up from yard sales, uh, car boot sales, that kind of thing. Um, the ones I have bought, well, that's the one I've bought, um, Henry Taylor's of Sheffield, which I really do rate. Some of, right, some of the other makes that I've come across, um, they tend to use harder steel, and although it's nice when you're using it. Once it gets blunt, it's really annoying, and you don't quite get the same edge somehow. Hard to explain. Some of uh, I uh, don't know if I've got a good example here, but uh, most of the carvers would. I don't know if that one. Um, no, that's not one. Most of the carvers had stamped the name or their initials into the tools, and so some of them that I've picked up from various places. Um, I've got three or four of the names, I can't find one now, three or four of the names on them. Um, oh, that's another load of gouges down there. <laughs> Some playing around, this was for Easter, I never got around to finishing things, playing around with it on the leg for Easter. Uh, mallets and hammers, got, if you need a hammer, how many man? Gouges, more gouges. These are picked up in Sri Lanka. Um, had to make my own. Oh no, I bought those handles. Junky old chisel handles. These, like talking about the, the steel that's used, these seem to be made from um, car spring steel. Because it's very. Well, it's bendy. It's like spring steel. Useful sometimes. Um, Anything else of note? Oh, a guitar stencil. Um, oh yeah, I, oh, at least half of the tools I've picked up second hand. Uh, half of the gouges, half of the wood carving tools. Um, made some bits and pieces, like that's a homemade mallet, a bit of boxwood. And I've got, got some lead inside there as well, just to give it a bit more oomph. Um, Anything else of interest? Not really. Oh, clamping, of course. Holding things down is pretty important. Making jigs. That's a jig I was using when I was putting the stairs together. Um, yeah, I guess that'll about do for now. Oh, homemade tool roll, of course. These are Henry Taylor as well. Uh, micro carving tools that are excellent for fine work. Really good at that kind of thing, and brilliant steel again. Um, 
Got my backyard out here. With a dog running about somewhere. I don't think she's realised that this door's open. And this is the Garfagnana Valley with uh, um, mozzarella you're looking at. 21 people at the last count. Three dogs, about a dozen cats I guess. Um, yeah, that'll do. Let's see. Let's see how that works at that quality. Ta-ra!